Hey guys, today we're going to discuss one theory of what makes people turn to crime. Now, this is called a differential association theory and it was first developed by Sutherland 1939. Now, I, I, I always say at the start of these videos, and this is going to be no exception, that I, I know not all of you, are, uh, far from all of you, are sitting in the OCR A-level psychology specification and some of you might not be interested in, in this video. Like, like I always say, you can you can feel free to watch other ones of my videos if you want. And I've got other tech videos coming soon because I know that's what I like you guys subscribe for. But doing these psychology videos helps me to learn the content that I need to learn, and um, it's useful for anyone sitting in the specification, and also. Um, Anyone who just happens to be interested in psychology. So, if, even if you're not um, that way inclined, I would recommend tuning in to this video because it's quite interesting. So, what um, what makes me, what makes people turn to crime? Well, obviously, a big part of cr cr criminal behaviour is how how you actually carry out the crimes. And what motivates you? Um, that's where differential association comes in. Um, a theory, differential association theory, Sutherland 1979. It was uh, uh, Sutherland 1939. It was later developed by Cressy, one of his students. But the original one is Sutherland 1939, and that's what's on the OCI A level spec. So that's what we're going to cover. Um, it's 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 a social learning theory. So think Bandura. It's not it's not Piaget. As if uh, um we go through various stages. Uh, um, it's a it's a social learning theory. So think Bandura, Bobo Bo, Bo, Bo doll experiment. And that's that's the that's the direction we're going here. And it outlines nine principles of what makes people criminals. So we're going to talk through those nine principles. And then um, we'll do some evaluation at the end. Cause, uh, as you know, evaluating research is a big, big component of um, th this particular spec. So, um, nine principles, what are they? Well, the first one is really simple. Remember I told you it was a learning theory. And the first one is criminal behaviours learned. Uh, um, we do some studies that are discuss on a later date about how uh, um, there might be biology might cause pre pre um, predisposition towards criminal behaviour. This is very much a learning theory. So principle one is that a criminal behaviour is learned. Uh, princ principle two is that criminal behaviour is learned but it's, it's learned through in inter interaction with other individuals in a process of communication, so you you learn it from other other people, different people. That's where the differential part comes in, and you do that in a process of communication. The the principle the principle three is that the the main part of the learning process uh, occurs with uh, imminent personal groups and personal groups. Uh, uh, of people that are important to the offender, uh, or should I say, the prospective offender, who um, that person that person will trust, and we'll talk about um, issues of priority and and duration in a minute. But um, before it gets that, Sutherland says that it has to be with. In, in intimate personal groups, so that's that's family, close friends, and people like that. So, um, the the next one, and um, when 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 criminal behaviour is learned, this is principle four now. When criminal behaviour is learned, don't they don't just learn um the techniques of. Committing the crime, they learn 
several aspects. Um, that include how, how how to commit the crime, why the the motivation behind the crime, attributions for the crime. So basically, excuses for why they've done it and and what what drives to commit the crime. So they they don't just learn how they learn sort of um wh wh why and um and attitudes as as to what their excuses are for why they commit the crime. So um and this this natural principle five is one of the biggest key ones. The the um the the, the the specific direction of the motives and drive is is, is learnt through a, a, a definition of the the legal code as favourable or unfavourable. So if I um if I said it's okay to go out and shoplift to someone else and I was important to them, they would learn that that legal code as unfavourable, so obviously it's okay to break. Um, so the specific direction of the motors and drivers is learned from definitions of the legal codes as favourable or unfavourable. I'm reading that directly from the thing because it's it's really important. Um, principle six, perhaps the most important: uh, a person who would not otherwise be a criminal becomes a criminal because of an excess of of these definitions that I spoke about a minute ago that um are, are favorable to law breaking. So if you have if you've learnt more definitions that are favorable towards breaking the law then you will you you will start to break the break the law because you you know you don't you don't see um, any reason. So you have to have more definitions that are favourable to violating the law than definitions that are unfavourable. Um, what, what I was talking about before, uh, uh, principle seven, differential associations may vary, vary in frequency, so that's how often, duration, how long, um, Priority, so that's uh, how high the person, how much respect the person gives to it. That's why it occurs in intimate personal wounds. But um, so differential associations may vary frequency, duration, pr priority, and intensity. So obviously that's how long, how strongly the other other person believes it and is and. Um, and conveys it to the prospective offender. Um, principle eight is that the I said before it's a social learning theory. So um, prin principle eight is that what um, when criminal behaviour is learned, it involves all all. All the same processes as um, non 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 criminal behaviour. So you you learn in exactly the same way as you would learn non criminal behaviour. That's why a, a lot of the resources on this topic that I developed for the OCI A level psychology specification are actually uh, based quite heavily on the Bandura study that we did for our core. Um, pr principle nine, the last principle, is that although uh, although criminal behaviours and um, uh, an expression of needs and values, it isn't it isn't that alone because our other behaviour that is not criminal is also an expression of our needs and values. So it's not just an expression of. Uh, what we feel we need and what we feel we value. Um, so let's go over those nine princ principles again. 
One, criminal behaviour is learned. Two, criminal behaviour is, is learned uh, f through association with other individuals in a process of communication. Principle three, uh, 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 it occurs within in intimate personal groups. Um, principle four, um, Learning includes techniques of committing the crime, um, the, 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 the motives and the attitudes that go along with it. Um, five, uh, the person learns uh, definitions of the legal codes as favourable or unfavourable to breaking the law, and obviously the most um the more definitions you have that are uh, uh, favorable to breaking the law the the more likely you are to become a criminal um, six a person becomes delinquent because of an excess of definitions that are favorable to breaking the law over a a excess of Definitions that are unfavorable to breaking the law. So, if you have more definitions that are favorable to breaking the law, you are more likely to uh, become a criminal. Uh, prince, principle seven um, differential association. So, that, that's your association with different people who may be offenders or non offenders, may vary in frequency, duration, and uh, priority and intensity. So if you hardly ever see non criminals then you you won't become you won't become a criminal. But if you're around criminals all the time, you're exposed to them for a long time and you value what they say, then you are um, you are likely to become a criminal. Uh, prin principle eight the, the process of learning criminal behaviour involves all the processes that are part of learning uh, non non criminal behaviour, and um, so you do, you're you're just learning different content essentially, but the the, the processes are the same. And um, uh, principle nine is interesting because because it's it says um, people often say they need they. Um, commit crime to satisfy a need. So, like, um, some people might say, my my family need food to eat, so I um I steal food to eat. So this this principle nine essentially says that while criminal behaviour can be can be an an expression of um, needs and values. It's no, it's no more of an expression of needs and values. It's the non-criminal behaviour. Um, so, so that's the that's the uh, research. Let's let's think about some evaluation issues. Well, and um, in my mind, there's there's two big problems with this research. One is that it's just. Um, it's just it's just a theory there's no um sort of empirical scientific evidence behind it so when you're thinking about psychology as a science it's not um it's not very high sounding or not it's all it's all it's also quite reductionist it says that um behaviors learned just through socialization and not learn through other, other factors whereas someone like Raynette Howe says that principally the criminal behavior comes from biology but then he also says um, you, you need you need exposure to bad social situations to turn turn those biological drives on so not a slightly less reduction reductionist than this but this is definitely reductionist so uh, you, you need about four issues for each 
evaluation question. So, just from, the, from this study, we've got a lack of empirical evidence, and um, we've got reductionism. Um, another issue is that uh, the, this this theory is quite old, so it may and um, it may only represent what um, and I know what was what was going on at, at that period of time in 1939. Obviously, the the, so, uh, the social situations, what was going on in the world, were different then, and may have influenced people's criminal behaviour. So you've got um. The, so, the social context problem is there. What what's the good thing about this research? Because you need you need ideally four or five aspects to co cover in each uh, question. And the good thing about this research is that it, it doesn't it, it doesn't break any eth ethical guidelines. They, 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 so the so the land didn't turn people into criminals. It, it, it's it's just a it's just a theory based on what 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 he had observed and what he believed to be true. So in that way, there's also no, um, be, due to the fact that there's no empirical research, there's no ethical problems, and there's the, there's a, there's also very high ecological ecological validity because people aren't going to be experimented on the be, the behaviours that Solon observed and and wrote about in his daily life would probably be representative of how people behave normally. So, um, that's Sutherland's theory of differential association. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Hope you've got something out of it. Um, be sure to visit our website address down below, tom uh, There's a whole bunch of good stuff over there. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Sutherland's Theory of Differential Association, 1939. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.